Ancient Empires, Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. Mesopotamia, land between two rivers, cradle of the world's first empires. Until about 900 BCE, Ashur and Babylon vied for supremacy in Mesopotamia. Then, from about 900 onwards, the Assyrian Empire became dominant and spread north and west and south, till Assyria controlled Mesopotamia, Syria, a large part of Arabia, and eventually even into Egypt. The Assyrian army could amass large numbers of soldiers equipped with bows and slingshots, as well as the more usual chariots, spears and swords, as this relief from Sennacherib's palace showing the taking of Lachish shows us. By the way, the slingshot was a fearsome weapon. Imagine these rocks the size of cricket balls being rained upon you. This obelisk, or engraved stone pillar known as the Black Obelisk, comes from 841 BCE and it tells of the campaigns and successes of Shalmaneser III in the West. In particular it tells of his defeat of Jehu and Jehu's paying tribute to him. Jehu was king of Israel. That's Jehu in the centre of the picture, grovelling at Shalmaneser's feet. It's the only known picture from the period of a character from the Bible. During the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah, Sennacherib, the Assyrian Emperor, marched against Hezekiah and captured most of his cities. The last major city apart from Jerusalem to fall was Lachish. This was a significant triumph for Sennacherib and he commemorated it on the walls of his palace. Lachish was a large city on a steep-sided tell. Here we're looking down from the palace towards the ancient gateway and beyond to the small hill where the Assyrian army was camped. Here we are looking at the ramp up to the gateway and then moving across to look at a cutaway of the large siege ramp that the Assyrian soldiers built in order to attack the walls of the city at a less defended spot. To make this ramp they had to shift huge quantities of stone and rubble and dirt and then attacking both up the ramp and using siege towers they took the city. Many of the defenders who were not killed in the fighting were impaled on stakes outside the city wall. Women and children were taken captive and carried away as slaves. Objects captured as booty were carried off in carts and on soldiers' backs. The city was destroyed. As well as the pictures from the relief from Sennacherib's palace and the associated written account, we know of these events also from the Bible. These fragments of parts with writing on we call them Ostraca. Tell of the last days of the doomed city during the later Babylonian attack. Among other things, they mention that the last watchtower from the rest of Judah which could be seen was from here, Tel Azeka, another dominating spot, this time governing the western approaches to Jerusalem. This is part of the annals of King Tiglath Pileser III. They tell of his campaign against Jua, Amon, Moab, Ashkelon, Edom, Gaza and Tyre. It was to this king that Damascus fell and not long after the northern kingdom Israel also fell to the Assyrian Empire. If you found the writing on Tiglath-Pileser's annals difficult to read it may be clearer on the back of this lion. The writing is called cuneiform and it's made up of combinations of wedge-shaped marks stuck into the wet clay with a shaped stick. The lion, with its beauty, its grace and its power, stands as a fitting symbol of the Assyrian Empire. To the south and east of the heartland of the Assyrian Empire, the ancient city of Babylon eventually gained independence and finally took control of the empire. First Mesopotamia itself and then virtually the entirety of what had been the Assyrian Empire was controlled by the Neo-Babylonians or New Babylonians. 
It was the Babylonians who captured Jerusalem. The city of Babylon became a wonder of the ancient world, the first great metropolis. This is the Ishtar Gate. All of its bricks are faced with brilliant colors. Just imagine the Judean exiles looking up at this gate, watching the processions. Carrying the majestic gold-plated idols of Babylon's gods through to the highway leading to the temple of Ishtar. The processional route too was lined with magnificent brilliantly coloured pictures like nothing ever seen before. Further to the east a new empire was rising. Cyrus the Persian took control from Iran to Turkey all along the northern border of the Babylonian Empire. Nabonidus king of Babylon at that time was unpopular. Cyrus was welcomed into Babylon as a liberator and built the largest empire the world had seen. The Oxus treasure, now in the British Museum, gives some idea of the wealth of the Persians and of their skill at metalwork. Cyrus' policy was different from that of the Babylonians. Instead of exiling conquered peoples, the Persians encouraged them to return home and to rebuild. This document, the Cyrus Cylinder, gives a very similar account of the orders which permitted that to that found in the books of the Bible.